Time is 7.36. My name is Glenn Woods, and in the studio with me is Nick from our news department. On the phone with us is current acting president, University of Wyoming, uh, Neil Theobald. Thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate your time. Well, what a thrill, Glenn. I listen to you every morning, oh, so it's uh, wonderful to be on the show. You'll get a tumor. I put that aside if I were you. Let me ask you real quick before we, I turn it over to Nick, because he's got a list of questions for you. University of Wyoming, schools like that, have to compete heavily with a lot of online universities these days. I see as you do a return to school, maybe you might uh, do a little more of both. I mean, a little more online learning, a little more in-school learning. Are you thinking about breaking it up like that? Yeah, we've actually, as Jubal Yenny in your previous segment mentioned, uh, we really have to had to be ready June 1 because our uh, student-athletes uh, show up over the weekend. So, uh, you know, the key issue there is social distancing. <clears throat> We may have classrooms that should have 30 students in them, but if you're going to have social distancing, you can only get maybe 12 or 15 in. So, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work as to how do we maybe have half the kids come on Tuesday, half the kids on Thursday, and for the other classes we use video and and the students can stay back in their residence halls or their apartments and and watch the class. So, yeah, we're we're well along on on the planning for uh, using remote education while they're here on campus. Well, President Theobald, thank you for being on this morning. It's nice to talk to you. Um, you know, given the risk of the virus spread, uh, obviously there's an importance for UW reopening the campus um, and and taking steps to combat that spread. So maybe you could outline, in terms of the effectiveness of education for those students, why is it so important that UW work on uh, getting the campus back up and running? Well, you know, there's obviously a lot of discussion here about the risks that are inherent in coming back in August. Uh, but we also have to give full weight to the risk of not reopening in August. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we all recognize well-being of faculty and staff, and students, members of the Laramie community, paramount in making this decision. But it's clear that on-campus educational experience provide benefit uh, to students both in the classroom and out that are simply unavailable uh, through online learning. Uh, so we've had about 100 people working on a plan with five working groups that will go to the board in about a week or so, uh, you know, four of them have worked basically seven days a week for three months uh, to put this together. Uh, but you know, our our conclusion is that the benefits of returning to our students uh, outweigh the risks there are, and obviously with social distancing, with mandatory use of masks, uh, with a number of other steps, personal responsibility will be critical in this uh, that we can safely return. And those of us who have been, <clears throat> excuse me, out of school for a while, can you give us a couple examples of, <clears throat> again, excuse me, uh, what exactly might not be available via distance education? Oh, uh, interaction with the faculty member. I mean, the teaching, uh, you know, John Dewey 120 years ago said, you know, teaching is a social endeavor. Uh, I've taught for 35 years in college classrooms. It is an, it is a inherently interpersonal relationship. So you, you miss all that. You learn from each other. Students learn from the other students in the classroom. I've actually taught remotely since 1994, and it is something you really have to work hard on in remote instruction is to connect the students together in some way so they get that learning from each other as well. So, you know, teaching education is a personal business, and so that you've got to get the interpersonal part of it in there. So that, that's what you miss when you're, you've got folks scattered around the uh, country as we've had the last three months. Certainly, and, and I want to move on to your uh, the university's request for $56 million mm-hmm. in uh, federal funding from the CARES Act. Uh, specifically, what's that money going to be for? Yeah, $20 million of it is for financial aid. We have about 13% of our students that have not registered for classes in the fall, and as we've reached out to them, major reason they have not uh, signed up. They're predominantly lower-income kids from Wyoming. Families have lost jobs in the state energy downturn. And we need to provide those students with, you know, the ability to pay for college uh, in that downturn. So that's the biggest piece. Then instructional technology. As I said, we're looking at splitting our classrooms part in person, part remote. We don't have cameras and microphones in most of our classrooms. So we're going to need to purchase a lot of uh, instructional technology so that we can have the social distancing in the classroom. So about, about half of it, in fact, just about exactly half of it, is financial aid for Wyoming kids, and the technology we'll need to teach in the classroom. Then we've got, uh, you know, testing. We're going to require everyone to have a COVID test before they come back. We're bringing kids in from 
you know, Houston, Denver, San Francisco, Seattle, all over these regions that are much more impacted by COVID than we are. Absolutely. So we're going to test them. There's cost to that, obviously. Then personal protective equipment, another $5 million. Professional development for our faculty. Two-thirds of our faculty had never taught online before March. They did a great job of getting online, but we can do better than that. Okay, and then research programs and so on.